Hi boys and girls, welcome back to Design Thinking with Mr. Cali. Today we're going to be moving through another simple, talking about another simple machine, moving through our simple machines unit, talking about the simple machine called the wedge. Um, people refer, some people refer to this um, simple machine as a portable inclined plane. And the reason why is because this tool, this simple machine is actually created by taking two inclined planes and putting them back to back. Um, these two inclined planes being back to back then creates a thick end on one end and a thin end on the other. Uh, this it gives a wedge um, mechanical advantage as it is used to split things apart or put them back together. Um, so being that we have a thick end and a thin end, this actually exerts more force on an object as we are trying to split it apart or potentially put it back together. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to um, real quick just demonstrate how a wedge is used. Um, here I have a very blunt ended piece of metal. Um, and then here I have a one that has a wedge tip, which has obviously two um, inclined planes that come together at the tip to create a thinner end and a thicker end. So I'm going to show you that real quick just by exerting some force on the end of this piece of wood. So I'm going to take the blunt end, I'm going to pound on it. And as you can see it kind of put a little indent in the wood but that's about it. Let's see what happens if we use um, a chisel which is really just a, an adapted form of the wedge. So I'm going to take the chisel, let's see what happens to this piece of wood now. So what's going to happen is I'm going to exert force down and the wedge will actually push it out on both sides. So three pounds just like before and look what happened. This time it's split apart. So what this does, a wedge gives us mechanical advantage by taking two inclined planes, putting it together and using it then as a tool, that thin tip part of it can be used as a tool. Um, this is a wedge that I have that's actually used for splitting wood. So I can actually take my um, sledgehammer outside, I can put this on top of a piece of wood if I want to split it, um, and I can actually use that and bam, split it in half for some campfire wood. Um, so again, we get mechanical advantage by putting two inclined planes together to create a thicker end on one end, skinnier on the other, and that way if we exhort force, if we exhort force on it, we actually have force going out. Okay, so let's discuss some common um, examples of wedges that we see around our households or just in our everyday lives. Um, one very common, very, very common wedge is a nail. Now a nail actually has four inclined planes. If you look at it very, very closely, there are four little inclined planes that all come together to make a very fine point. And obviously that is used then for splitting wood. It's very easy for me if I'm trying to split some wood. Um, that's the same thing with the chisel. So I just showed you um, one variation of a chisel and how it would, there's lots of different kinds of chisels, how it would split wood. Um, a hatchet's very similar. So a hatchet's used for splitting wood as well. Um, and then I have also some tools here that are examples of how we split dirt. So you might go outside and split some soil with your um, spade shovel. Or um, if you look here, this is actually part of my um, <clears throat> of a system just for watering my grass and so obviously to make it easier for me to put this into the ground we would use a wedge on the end of it that's a tip that all comes its thicker part and two inclined planes and they come together to make a very thin um, point that I can use for sticking that in the dirt we also have gardening shovels um, what I want you to realize though is that we don't just talk about um, splitting dirt or using these for like hard, you know, for hard manual labor type jobs. We actually use a wedge even when we just look in our kitchen. Um, so examples would be like a spatula would be a very good example. Um, it starts out thicker and then comes to a, a point at the end. You have that inclined plane. It makes it easier for us to, when we're scooping materials. Same thing with a fork or really even any spoon that we have. All of our spoons are thicker and they get thinner as you get to the tip of it. So even if you're just trying to spread apart some ice cream to eat, right, you would be using um, a wedge. So other ways you might see a wedge being used out in the world is if you were to uh, look at 
the way cars are designed or if you were to look at um, even a, a race car or a boat or you could look at an airplane um, they're all designed using a wedge so that their um, certain parts of the vehicle can go through water or go through air um, with the least amount of resistance possible using this wedge design um, to make sure as they're driving through it's cutting through the air or cutting through the water um, most efficiently. So it's another way that wedges are used. They're not just used around our house, they're actually used um, for designing purposes as well when we think about um, automobiles or watercrafts. In today's maker portion of the video, I'm gonna go around and I'm just gonna show you guys um, how I can use these uh, the wedge to make my work easier. Now, after you watch this week's design thinking video, I'd like you to remember that you should be sending Mr. Kelly pictures or videos of this simple machine that we talked about today and um, how it's used around your household. So you don't necessarily have to build um, the simple machine, but if you could go around and look for it, see if there's different ways that you can use the simple machine. Um, and then make sure you're sending those videos to Mr. Callie or send those pictures to Mr. Callie um, about what the simple machine is called and then how you're using it around your house to make your work easier. As always, I can't wait to hear from you and I hope all is well. Let's go make.